So with this session, I just want to, I'm going to go over the toolkit and I want to explain motivations behind it, how some of it works and quick work, like a quick example. But then I'm going to fly through my time a little bit quick so that I can maybe ask you some questions and get some feedback. Um, and if you want a little more explanation on any of the tools, just we'll, we can do that. Okay, so Squiggle Kit was, uh, was made out of a bunch of tools that I was making while doing many other types of research. So, uh, for example, single cell or trying to develop read until algorithms or looking for poly A tails or trying to develop deep learning um, data sets so you can create your uh, data sets to do your testing and validation and all that jazz. Um, and at the time, when I was trying to do this, uh, there was this list of uh, things that weren't quite there. There were tools that were similar, and I'll go into that in a second, but you know, there are no real general tools for managing and filtering your FAST5 files. You know, you've got millions and millions of files, a little bit, we'll get to MultiFAST5 later, um, millions and millions of files, and you had to um, manually kind of grab these without you know, trying to destroy your HPC or your laptop. And so um, I wanted to get around that. Uh, there were no tools for raw signal extraction. Everyone was still kind of in the event space, and raw was only just coming through with the new recurrent neural networks. Um, and there were limited tools for actually visualizing that, um, those uh, squiggles. And uh, once you start looking at them, you start getting ideas of what you can do with them. Uh, I think a lot of people getting started with nanopore sequencing, the signal data can be a little bit daunting and if, you, if you're just used to ATCs Cs and Gs. So I built some tools to help with that. Um, there were no general tunable tools for structural changes, and I'll explain what that means in a, in a minute. And there were limited tools for uh, general base to signal query. So at the moment, a base caller goes from the signal space to ATCs and Gs, and, uh, but there was no real way to go backwards. Uh, a few people like Matt Luce uh, had done a bit of work on this uh, and some stuff in Scrappy um, from Nanopore. Uh, but I wanted to make that a little bit more general use. Uh, so I made these five tools. Uh, Fast5 Fetcher to manage your, your, your data. Squiggle Pull to pull your squiggles. Uh, squiggle Plot to show them. And uh, Segmenter to cut up your reads. And Motif Seek is a kind of control F for signal or blast in, in signal space. So these are some of the, just a, a splattering of the existing tools. There's you know hundreds out there now, but the ones that mostly overlap the tools that I built um, with some similarity or you know, exact uh, overlaps. Uh, so for example, uh, HDFU. So this is from the guys that make HDF5. Um, you can easily view and plot these squiggles. It's very easy, but it looks terrible. So, <laughs> uh, so I wanted to make that a little prettier. Um, Tombow, beautiful tool, fantastic, does what you want, but it's very limited. It, it was designed for modification detection. So even though you can do many things that SquiggleKit does, uh, it, it's, its direction is slightly different. So it, it doesn't have that real general feel and simplicity of use. Uh, and one other thing I wanted to do was make sure that anyone getting started could just read my code and rip it off. I want you to take it, just copy a function, paste it in your own code, and off you go. Maybe throw me a citation or something. But, uh, <laughs> so, so an overview of the, the tools a little bit more. So fast five fetcher. This, this here is to kind of demonstrate what you'd normally do in a uh, regular workflow. So if you have all your thousands of fast five files and you wanted to say do a nanopore um, polishing step, uh, which uses the signal files, uh, currently you'd index all the files, throw them all across to where you're going to do your analyses on say a cluster or something, it would have to index all of those files, and then it might only use a splattering of them to do the analyses. So uh, one, one use case for fast five fetcher was to just filter down the reads you're going to use in the first place. Say it might just be one region of the, chrom of, of the genome, or maybe it's like one bacterial uh, species that you've identified. You can cut down your fast queue or your alignment file, and then uh, just give that to it. It will go off, grab your uh, fast five files, and it speeds up all your analyses. Another one, there was some questions yesterday about partitioning barcodes. And you know, if you've got multiple samples or clinical samples and you want to separate those, you just give it each fast queue after you've done the, uh, um, the demultiplexing. And then just run fast five fetch it. It'll grab all the fast fives, cut down your sequencing summary files. You can run all your uh, QC tools after that. And it will give you all the plots for just those particular barcodes. So in my opinion, I think this is the most useful and uh, one that I think most people will probably be interested in. Um, 
And then you know, we get onto the sig signal stuff, which is for a bit more niche, niche usage. So squiggle pull does exactly what it says. It pulls squiggles. Um, so you can do a little bit of filtering there as well uh, if you, without having to do the fast five pulling. Um, but essentially, it makes a TSV file. Everyone knows how to pass a TSV file if you're a bioprotician or even not. You, if you can open Excel, um, I wouldn't recommend opening these files in Excel. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of data points, um, it will crash. But uh, it makes it a lot easier to work with. And you get around the, um, the clunkiness of the HDF5 library um, for fast five files. So squiggle plot, again, does exactly what it says. It plots squiggles. So this is what a squiggle looks like. And for those of you that might be new to the technology, uh, this little bit just here, this is what we call the stall. So this is the start of a read. And then this little peak here, this is the start of the adapter sequence. And then you can go through and have some squiggles. And then this here is a poly T region of T, 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 T. And then this goes off to some, C, some CDNA. Uh, now, one of the things is you know, changing colors. This HDF5 view, which I was talking about, it's all black, like kind of grayscale. And when you make these with uh, my software, it'll give it all to you in vector. So you can like, then chop and change it and stick it in your publications. And it makes it nice and easy. Uh, so segmenter. Segmenter can then run on this uh, signal data. And those structural changes, like the stall here, or a poly A tail at the end of a transcript, you can identify these regions. This might be useful because you might want to look at the signal just adjacent to the poly T tail, the poly A tail here, or look and see the adapter and something that's attached to the adapter, like a barcode. Uh, some OTC. This is the, if you've ever gone to a, a website and you want to find something, so you go Control F, you type what you want, and then it comes up. Uh, this is kind of like that, but for signal space, or for blast, if you're used to that. Um, so in this case, we take the letter sequence that we're interested in, a motif. We convert that into a synthetic signal here. So this is the blue line. And then we use a dynamic programming matrix to scan across the raw signal. And then we can find the, the best path through that, that matrix. And here, when you extract the signal, you can see it's a little bit warped, but it generally follows the same ups and downs as the synthetic signal. Now, this is, this is quite useful if you want to find something very specific um, uh, or check that something's there. So this is available on GitHub. You can download it right now. But you might want to wait uh, just a day because um, there's an update coming. Uh, I wrote it all so it's uh, as simple as possible. No crazy fancy um, packages. I think the only fancy package I use is for um, Motif Seek. It's, an, it's not on a pip wheel. It's called MLPY. Um, it works on Mac, it works on Windows, it works on Linux, obviously. Um, and uh, for Multifast 5, I've been using the ONT um, uh, API. So, and that's on a pip wheel, so it's nice and easy to install. And just like that, you can install it and run it. Um, no compiling, just works. So as a quick example, uh, let's say we, uh, if anyone was at the talk uh, from Martin Smith the other day, um, he showed this example of trying to find the, uh, the three prime end here next to the poly T tail um, of two particular, tra something, a transcript that mapped to two, two different transcripts. And you want to find out which one's the real one. So on the uh, GitHub, you can go to this example, and it has all the files you need to run through this, this uh, example here. So, Fast Fire Fetcher, it's got these, uh, all the options in the help. Um, there's some advanced usage here, this PPPP. That's for if you've got a high performance computing cluster, you can uh, extract about 1.2 terabytes of data in about 10 minutes. So if you really want to do massive computing, that, that helps. Um, we've got Squiggle Pull, it's very simple. Just Python, what it is, where you want it, name the file, it makes it for you. We've got Squiggle Plot. Uh, you can tell it just to plot, say, the first 2,000 and change the color. So this is default. This is zoomed in at 2,000. And when you start looking at squiggles, you can see these aberrations. Segmenter. Segmenter is a little bit more complicated uh, to find these. There's, there's quite a lot of uh, um, different variables you can use to, to tune everything. Uh, 
and you can visualize each one of these. You can run it on thousands of files, or just you can visualize them. You can see how it finds these two regions. Uh, zooming in, you can see the, ac like the accuracy of the cuts, where you can see it cuts right on these regions of where the homopolymer stretches are, or the storm. Then with uh, Motif Seek, you can then uh, feed a model in from that you can make with Scrappy, the synthetic uh, model. And then you know, that can also target exactly where it is. So this was targeting the particular uh, correct three prime end. And if you do it with the other one, it doesn't, it doesn't hit this point. And based on the positions, you can tell if it was real or not. And this is what the synthetic versus the real signal looks like. Now you can see it's warped quite heavily, but the peaks and troughs all kind of match up. This step pattern here, there's this step pattern here, for example. And so that's kind of an example workflow that you might work with. And uh, you might ask, what about Python 3? What about Multifast 5? Well, give me a day, and I'm pushing that update. So uh, it was meant to be right now, but um, the conference is just too interesting. So um, now I like to thank my team. and. Uh, uh, Dr. Martin Smith and uh, Hasindu and Sean and Kai, they've helped me put this together and test it. And the sequins, these are the synthetic spike-ins uh, from Tim Mercer's group that helped me benchmark all of my tools, and you should use them too.